Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Wednesday the 23rd of December 2020. We're going to start off today's show with a bit of uh, transfer gossip because it's only what, a week and a half away or, or maybe coming up to just over a week until the Jan- January transfer window starts. It starts on the 2nd of January, not the 1st, the 2nd of January it starts. Uh, so we're going to get uh, these gossip websites uh, going to be looking for clickbait but a story popped up today is it clickbait is it not we don't know let's have a look and this is from the football insider 247.com and it says exclusive Tottenham to terminate forward loan deal early and this is about Troy Parrott apparently going back to Spurs so let's have a read of this. It says Tottenham are set to terminate the loan deal of striker Troy Parrott early. Football Insider can exclusively reveal. The striker 18 has struggled to make an impact at Championship outfit Millwall since joining on a season long loan in, in the summer. A Tottenham source, this is where they're getting this from, a Tottenham source has told Football Insider that the club are planning to reach an agreement with the second tier outfit over ending Parrott's loan at the midway point when the Chan- January transfer window opens. Tottenham are able to take advantage of a recall option and talks are expected to take place soon to end the deal. The teenager began the campaign with an ankle injury that kept him out until the 21st of November. Since then he has made five league starts among nine appearances in all competitions for Millwall. So that's what they're saying. They're saying they're going to recall him. It's just a bit of gossip from a gossip website. So you don't know how true it is or what's happening there maybe it's just for clicks but we do know that you can recall the player because we've done it ourselves we recall we announced yesterday that we were recalling Danny McNamara from St Johnston who played tonight actually in uh, St Johnston's 3-0 home loss to Rangers so gossip there that Tottenham want Troy Parrott out of Millwall yeah. and to be honest I think it might be best for both of us because Troy Parent isn't the player we thought we were in we thought we were going to get a goal scoring striker who could score goals and he's not that and I'm going to show you that now by showing, taking a look at a few things this here is a Millwall page from soccerbase.com These are the results so far this season with a little player filter put on and the player filter is for Troy Parrott. So what you're seeing here is the games greyed out, games where Troy Parrott did not play and the games games in uh, bold that you can see clearly are the games that Troy Parrott started. Made a few substitute appearances as well but these are just the games he started so Let's have a look. So I think he he done he got injured before in the last preseason friendly he got injured I think. So he missed all these games here. And he come back against Burnley. He started against Burns, Burn, Burnley in the EFL Cup, and he got injured in like first couple of minutes there. Didn't he? Yeah, half time he come off. He got injured and. Even though he was injured early on, he wanted to play on. And they're saying that could have messed him up even more. So he got injured. Didn't tell anyone that how bad it was, but come off time, it's like, oh no, you need to, you can't play. You need to come off. Which is a um, stupid thing to do, but let's have a look. So you get down here and you see when he come back. Oh, let's have a look. The game's in between from when he first started and he got injured so during his injury we won against uh, Wickham scoring two goals one against Luton scoring two goals and one against Preston scoring two goals we had two defeats away to Swansea 2-1 and at home to Huddersfield 3-0 and then one, two, three, four, five draws two nil-nil draws and two one uh, three one-one draws but you can see here when he came back Wednesday against Reading 
a draw, scoring one goal. Against Birmingham, draw, scoring no goals. Defeat away at Blackburn, we scored one goal. He missed uh, the derby game, didn't, or he didn't start there. He came on in the 58th minute in that game. And he started against QPR. We drew, scoring one goal. He started away at Moosborough. And we lost that game quite badly. 3-0. And then he had substitute appearances in... Oh no, he didn't come on as a sub against Bristol City. Maybe that's what put his nose out of joint. He's a bit upset about that, I don't know. But then we see here, um, the, the latest game, the game this weekend just gone past. He came on in the 72nd minute and we were trying to win the game, trying to push on and win the game. And it's, when he came on, it was kind of weird he was kind of playing like in the center of midfield like p passing the ball around it was a bit weird he did he wasn't up front matt smith was up front and he wasn't up front which is very very weird he's kind of playing center midfield and he was uh miss passing the ball all kinds of bad he wasn't playing well so you see here, matches where Troy Parrott started, 1-0, drew free, lost free. Matches without him, 1-7, drawn 7, lost free. And you can draw your own conclusions there, but from what that looks like and from what I've seen with my own eyes, it doesn't add much to the team. So... Probably all the best that he's going. He was hyped up to the to the tenth degree when he came in because he's like a Spurs wonder kid, and all all the young fans they're like they watch the Premier League and they they idolise it for some reason, and they just thought, oh, we're getting a player from Spurs. Oh, wow, he must be good. But he's come here and he hasn't shown anything. He hasn't shown anything at all. Uh, if you did an highlight reel of his time at Millwall, jeez, it'd probably be a minute long if that. So let's have a look. Um, this is from infogold.net. What I've pulled up here is uh, Troy Parrott's statistics. This website tracks uh, passing, shooting, tackling, uh, that kind of thing. And what they do is they give you ratings. Um, based on all those statistics, so so far, he's he's rating here is five point nine six. He's he started five sub three. He's had four hundred and twenty five minutes. That's fifty three minutes per match that he's he's been involved in. And have a look here. This is for for a player that's supposed to be a striker. This is a abysmal, absolutely abysmal. He's uh, he hasn't scored. His expected goals are 0 0.36. Now, expected goals, if you don't know, let's have a click on that. Expected goals is a metric which estimates the quality of a chance given a number of variables which include things like shot location, shot type, etc. A team may have created several clear cut chances and failed to score. Expected goals looks at the chances and uses this to assess teams and their performance, which is more reliable than raw goals and raw results. So you see there, his expected goals are 0.3. He's had, in his 425 minutes on the pitch, he's had nine shots, three of which have been on target, two off target, four blocked shots. He's been offside once. Oh, that's pretty good. Only offside once in eight games. He's, foul, he's been fouled 10 times. He's passing, so expected assists. This is like chances. They're like expected goals he's created for other people. 0.13 passes. 117 passes. 
91 completed that's 78 percent now that's very high because i'm going to show you in a minute um the stats for the other two main strikers that he's competing with that is pretty high for someone who's supposed to be a striker he's defending he's attempted three tackles only succeeded once that's 43 33 percent he's uh made 10 10 fouls so you see there We've got a striker who can't score, but loves to pass the ball. Like he's not even shooting. You don't shoot, you're not going to score. I'm going to show you here. Let's have a click over to Tom Bradshaw on the same website, infogold.net. We go down here, but it's more or less the same. He's had 629 minutes on the pitch, so, uh, 52 minutes per match, similar to um, old uh, young Troy, and the rating here is 6.52. A lot better than, or a bit better than Troy. But Tom Bradshaw scored three goals from expected goals of 1.66. So he's overperforming. He's pulling, he's pulling goals out of half chances. Which is sadly mostly what we, we create in Millwall these days. Having, uh, we don't really have cream, cream and the cop strikers that we used to have in recent years. Morrison, Gregory, and Neil Harris. So it's a bit of a bit of a um, come down from those strikers of the recent past. He's had eleven shots, four four on target, six off target, one block shot. He's been offside once. He's foul, been fouled eight times. He's assists same as uh, Troy, zero point one three. He's not he's not setting up any goals. Here. He's sort of foxing the box, running on, make, making goals out of the. Half chances, quarter chances. He and look here at what I was saying about the passer rating. He's had 141 passes, only 83 complete. So that's 59 percent. That's so compared to Troy, he's not he's, he's not passing the ball around too well, but he's getting goals, which is what you want a striker to do. You want him to get goals. You don't want him to pass the ball around. Anyway, and if you think that's we're going to have a look at Jean Daddy Bodvarsson now. You'll see the same thing. Similar, six, six starts with ten sub appearances. So he's had a little, he's had more minutes than the other two fellas. He's had uh, 754 minutes on the pitch, 47 minutes per match. So he's had more minutes, but it's been spread out per match because he's had a lot of um, substitute appearances. His rating 6.24. He's called one goal. Only the one. Just broke it um, on the weekend against Forest, I think. No, was it Forest or Bristol? No, Bristol City it was. He's expected goals, 0.87. So again, it's rough. It's under the one goal. So it's uh, doing well. When you've got a goals, when you've got expected goals that are lower than your goals, you're doing well. Uh, he's had 12 shots on target. No, he's had 12 shots, 4 on target, 4 off target, 4 block shots, 4 off sides, and he's been fouled 7 times. He's got 1 assist, and that's from expected assists of 0.95, so that's bang on. But his pass, passing rating as well, completed passes, 58%, similar to Tom Bradshaw. Yeah. You don't want your strikes, uh, maybe, or I don't know if you do, you don't want him to be tick ticky tacky in the ball around. Up front and around the box, you want them to be smashing it in towards the goal. Yeah, his uh, tackle success rate is uh, pretty decent here, um, very good. So he's good at um, um, pressure, putting pressure on up front, tackling, tackling players, or coming back and down the flanks and uh, defending. He's got 14 tackles attempted, been successful 11 times, 79%. That's really, very good. So, like I'm saying, I don't know if it's just football um, gossip. Now that the transfer window's about to open, they, these websites need to get your clicks. Click, 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 click. I don't know if that's what they're doing here, but to be honest with you, I, w I would not be surprised if they if they want Troy Parrot back or if Troy wants to leave. Because he hasn't been playing well at all. He's, he's a striker who doesn't score. He's a striker who doesn't even shoot. If you don't shoot, you can't score. 
Uh, so moving on to the next story of the day, we've got super goalkeeper Bart Biakowski. He's been signed on for another year automatically because he's hit a contract extension uh, clause in his contract and he's going to get another year automatically. So let's have a look at um, the news here from londonnewsonline.co.uk which is the South London Press is online website. And uh, this is from Rich Corley. It says Bartos Biakowski has triggered a 12 month contract extension at Millwall. It means a 33 year old goalkeeper will be on the Lions books until at least the summer of 2022. Biakowski has made 71 appearances for the SC16 outfit since signing from Ipswich Town. The Poland stopper won the championship's Golden Glove award last season after keeping 16 clean sheets. Biakowski has already added a further eight shutouts in the current campaign, the most recent coming in the 2-0 victory at Bristol City last week. So he's got another year, which I think is great. Um, I think it's uh, absolutely vital if you can't if you can't score goals, you, you stop the opposition from scoring, and along with uh, decent decent uh, defense that we have, he's a big part of that. And he's got another year, which is good. And lastly today, I'm going to talk about, we had news of the AFC Bournemouth fixture being rearranged. That was the Boxing Day game that was supposed to be happening, but got cancelled because of the plague that's going around. But to this this was an away game, so wouldn't have been able, no Millwall fans would have been able to go there anyway. So you would have them to try and watch it on I follow, and they've rearranged it for Tuesday the twelfth of January, and a kick off seven forty five p.m. So it was this is what it says here on the Mill website. It says the Lions will now face four consecutive away games next month with journeys to Boreham Wood in the FA Cup, Nottingham Forest, and Uddersfield Town also set to be played around this game. Which is sounds a bit ominous that four four away games in a row, especially that one uh, uh, boring wood. I uh, don't know about you guys, but that that seems like a bit of a banana skin because we're not playing that well. We really, really aren't playing well, and it's a bit worrying that game. Hopefully, we'll do okay anyway. That's it for today. Bye bye.